Howdy and welcome to the 10-Week Bible Study. This is week 7, day 1 of our study of Ezra. I'm your host, Darren Hibbs, and today we're talking about Ezra 7, 1 through 10. Hey, real quick, if you'd like more info on the 10-Week Bible Study, head over to 10weekbible.com today. We've got lots of helpful resources, links to studies you can lead or read, and a place to sign up for our email list where we will send out weekly updates about the current study as well as news about upcoming studies. All right, thanks. With that, let's jump back into it. Welcome back to the 10 Week Bible Study. Again, I'm your host, Darren Hibbs. Would you join me as we pray before we start today? Lord, would you open our eyes and our ears to hear what your word has to say to us, God? Speak to us. Fill our hearts with the knowledge of you. We want to know you more today through your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. With that, let's jump into God's word. I'll be reading today from the NIV. This is Ezra chapter 7, starting in verse 1. After these things, during the reign of Artaxerxes, king of Persia, Ezra, son of Seraiah, the son of Azariah, the son of Hilkiah, the son of Shalom, the son of Zadok, the son of Ahitub, the son of Amariah, the son of Azariah, the son of Meraoth, the son of Zerahiah, the son of Uzi, the son of Buki, the son of Abishua, the son of Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the chief priest. This Ezra came up from Babylon. He was a teacher well-versed in the law of Moses, which the Lord, the God of Israel, had given. The king had granted him everything he had asked, and the hand of the Lord God was on him. I want to pause right there. Uh, There's a, a, a big change that's happened here from the time... Uh, really any any other time in Israel's history up to now. There have always been priests and Levites ever since the time of Aaron, but this is marking something that's changing here. And what this says about Ezra is very intriguing based on what's actually going to change during this time period. Israel had been exiled to Babylon because of their disobedience of God. They had not kept the law of Moses. When God gave Moses the law, he told them, I'm going to bless you as long as you follow this. And when you turn away from this, when you turn away from me, I'm going to send foreign armies. I'm going to send pestilence. I'm going to send plagues. I am going to trouble you until you pay attention, until you're like, wait a second, you wake up and you're like, oh, the reason all of this is happening is because we turned away from the Lord our God. The Lord gave them this promise, follow me and things will go well, turn away from me and things will not go well. And it's not because God is is just wanting to smite people if they don't do exactly as he says. The problem is when we don't follow the Lord's plan for our lives, for humanity, for any person, things don't go well for us. It's destructive. There are really just two plans in life that we can follow. We can follow God's, or we can follow our adversaries. We can listen to that voice of the serpent in our head asking us, saying, God isn't really good. I mean, he's not really good. He's really not going to kill you. Surely not. I mean, look at how good this fruit is to eat for gaining knowledge. Surely he won't kill you just for gaining a little knowledge. That's the voice of the enemy. We have one of those. I mean, it's, you know, it's like the old cartoon where you got the angel and the demon on one side, you know, Satan and, and uh, the angel like whispering into your ear that, I mean, there's a lot of reality to that. And so Israel had turned their hearts away from God. They were following. And and one of the things, especially in that context, that was uh, a very outward display of what was going on inside of them was that they were worshiping other gods, false idols during that time period. They were actually were bowing down and worshiping and making sacrifices to these other gods. And so eventually the Lord carried them away. They understood while they're in Babylon that the reason that this had come upon them was because they worshiped other gods. They had turned their hearts away from God. And so during that time in Babylon, something new begins to appear, and it's what develops into the synagogue system that's going to come after the exile's return all the way until the time of Jesus. It wasn't just going to be the priests and Levites who are going to know the word of God. They wanted to start 
having a, a very structured environment to start teaching the law to people. And so this mention here of Ezra being someone well-versed in the law. Now, yes, he was a priest and priests had always needed to know this, but that doesn't mean that they always did know the scripture. They didn't always know the law like this. This is the beginning of something new where there's going to be I don't want to say an elite class, but really it's kind of a, an elite learned class of people who have devoted themselves to studying the law of God to kind of help manage the Israelites that they won't turn away from him. And this is going to develop into the system that we see when Jesus comes on the scene. And it's a very corrupted system at that time, but at this time it is not. This is, it is not a corrupted system at this point. It is uh, They are developing this new structure where you've got teachers of the law instructing people on the law, formalizing a system for that so that Israel would never turn away from God toward idol worship again. And that happened. That was effective. That worked. Israel never did turn back to idol worship again. Now, I want to go back to our timeline here and just remind you, for those of you that are watching, you can see this on the screen now. For those of you not, I, again, I encourage you to get the uh, sign up for the email list, check the notes, and I've got these, uh, th these extra helps here available. You can see the break between Ezra's chapters 1 through 6 and Ezra chapters 7 through 10. We've had a very long gap. The first part of Ezra was not really even during Ezra's lifetime. Now we've had a, a whole bunch of history has taken place. A whole bunch of time has passed. And now Ezra is coming. And Ezra and Nehemiah are going to come uh, around the same time periods within the same generation. And and so you can see that there is a, a, a very large gap of time. And these dates are, um, they're approximate, but approximately 460-ish AD or BC, excuse me, is when Ezra shows up and the first six chapters ends somewhere around 515 BC. So there's been quite a bit of time. There's been, uh, you know, well over or not quite a hundred years. We've had 70 ish years here go by, uh, or, or excuse me, 40 ish years go by, um, and 20, 30, 40, 50. No, I'm excuse me. We've had six, seven, yeah, 75 years ish go by again. All of those dates are, are, are not, uh, exact because we don't know exact dates for a lot of that, but they're pretty close. So we've got well into a generation, 70 ish years, somewhere around then from the beginning of this to now when Ezra shows up. All right, continue on verse seven. Some of the Israelites, including priests, Levites, musicians, gatekeepers, and temple servants also came up to Jerusalem in the seventh year of King Artaxerxes. Ezra arrived in Jerusalem in the fifth month of the seventh year of the king. He had begun his journey from Babylon on the first day of the first month and arrived in Jerusalem on the first day of the fifth month. So it took him four months for the Lord, for the gracious hand of his God was on him. Verse 10, for Ezra had devoted himself to the study and observance of the law of the Lord and to teaching its decrees and laws in Israel. So what this is telling you is that he took four months to make this trip that presumably should have taken much longer, would have been more difficult, but he got there quickly. And, and our author here is telling us that, you know, this happened to him because he was someone who had devoted himself to studying the law. The Lord was interested in getting him and his associates to Jerusalem as, as fast as possible to begin teaching the law there. And, and here's the thing is during this time period over in Babylon, before this time period, this system was being worked on of we need people who will be dedicated to to studying this and then teaching the law to everyone in Israel, not just the, the educated elite. We need some educated elite people to study this, but they need to teach it to everybody. And so they were doing that. And in the first batch, the first few waves of people that went back to Jerusalem and been working on it, it doesn't appear that anybody from that 
formalized or f- formalizing system had come back. And what we're going to find out here in the last few chapters of Ezra is it looks like it might have been necessary because they immediately started wandering away from the Lord. Ezra is going to come back and he is going to, I mean, in some ways reform and beat these people. I mean, we're going to see that Nehemiah is literally going to beat people when we get to the book of Nehemiah. He is literally going to beat them for their disobedience and for turning away. And so having the word of God ever before us is so important. Our hearts turn away so quickly if we don't have it ever before us. And that is what Ezra is on his way to do. For the 10-week Bible study, I'm your host, Darren Hibbs, and I can't wait to see you next time. Hey, thanks for watching the 10-Week Bible Study. If you've enjoyed this, would you consider doing that whole like and subscribe and bell thing you're always hearing people talk about? It really helps other people find out about the show, and my heart is for people to fall in love with God's Word. Thank you. Thank you.